Welcome to the Soul Winning Motivator Broadcast with Daniel White III. My name is Danita Evangeline White and I am the second oldest daughter of Daniel White III. We are glad that you have joined us today as Daniel White III encourages us to keep the soul winner's fire by spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Soul Winning Motivator Broadcast slash podcast number 86. This is Daniel White the third. My wife Marika is in the studio with me helping me with this podcast today. I am the president of Gospel Light Society International. As always it is so good to be with you today to encourage you to witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. The simple purpose of this broadcast is to encourage you, exhort you, and uh, motivate you, if you will, to share your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ with those who are lost around you, those who are not saved those who are not believers, those who are not Christians. God wants you to witness to them. Even though we will share some instructions on how to witness for the Lord from time to time, we believe that most Christians in church today do not need to learn how to witness for the Lord. Uh, They simply just need to get up and go and do it. Go ye into all the world, Jesus said, and preach the gospel. So our aim is more motivational than instructional. Our soul winning passage from the word of God today is Isaiah 45, 22, which reads, Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, For I am God, and there is none else. Allow me to share with you, beloved, some important insights regarding this scripture from David Guzik's commentary on the Bible. This simple but powerful statement shows the plan of salvation. It shows the simplicity of salvation. All we must do is look. One can read many books on theology which expound all kinds of things in an attempt to show how man can reach God. But these theories are far from the truth. The Holy Spirit needs exactly four letters, two of them the same, to tell us what to do. L-O-O-K, look. That is all. It is the simplest, basic thing any person can do, yet the most difficult to do in daily living. It shows the focus of salvation. We must look to God and never to ourselves or to anything else of man. Look unto me is his word, which means looking away from the church because that will save nobody, away from the preacher because he can disappoint and disillusion you, away from all outward form and ceremony. You must look off from all this to the throne and there in your heart see the risen, reigning Lord Jesus Christ. It shows the love behind salvation. God pleads with man, look to me. It shows the assurance of salvation and be saved. It shows the extent of God's saving love, all you ends of the earth. In Numbers 21, the people of Israel were stricken by deadly Uh, snake bites, and Moses lifted up the image of a bronze serpent raised on a pole, and the people who looked to it lived. The 
people were saved not by doing anything, but by simply looking to the bronze serpent. They had to trust that something as seemingly foolish as looking at such a thing would be sufficient to save them. And surely some perished because they thought it too foolish to do such a thing. This is why we must look to the Lord and to the Lord alone. Only He is God. Institutions are not God. The church is not God. Pastors are not God. Brothers and sisters in Christ are not God. We don't look to them. We look to the, to the Lord, for He alone is God. Ladies and gentlemen, our show winning quote today is from Leo Buscaglia. He said, Too often we underestimate the power of a touch, a smile, a kind word, a listening ear, an honest compliment, or the smallest act of caring, all of which have the potential to turn a life around. Our Soul Winning Devotional is part 69 of our series titled, What Evangelism Is, from Dave Early and David Willow. Evangelism is Learning to Listen, part 3. Key Listening Mistakes. If the goal is attentive and eventually empathetic listening, you will want to avoid the five key listening mistakes. They are number one, make believe listening. This is similar to pretend listening. If listening is equated to caring, people will eventually know that you care by the way you value their words and what they have to say. By the way, if you don't have this great book, Evangelism Is, by Dr. Dave Early and Dr. David Wheeler, I believe both teach at Liberty University, uh, you need to get a copy of this book today. Go to Amazon.com and get it. Read it for yourself and then do it. Number two, one-up listening. You know what that is. Rather than listening and empathetically relating to the other person's pain, the temptation is to minimize that person's story with a more impressive experience of your own. This will not lead to effective evangelism. Number three, Barney Fife listening. We all know about this mistake. It relates to one of Barney's most famous lines on The Andy Griffith Show, nip it in the bud. But sometimes it is better to listen and to keep our solutions to ourselves. The heart of empathetic listening is not arriving at a solution. It is rather the compassion it takes to be fully connected even if that means remaining silent. Fourth, Dr. Phil listening. Dr. Phil listening. This is listening that can easily become a show or worse, your job. There's little empathy here, just a disconnected string of trite suggestions. It is listening with your mind, but not your heart. Fifth, iPod listening. This is one of the greatest afflictions of modern culture. That is, we deify ourselves by walking through life in our own little world with little concern about the needs of hurting people. After all, how can we listen to the cries of the needy if our hearts, minds, and ears are closed and we are consumed by the desire for personal gratification? Think about it. How often have you walked through a crowded area with little concern for others because you are distracted by some form of technology? 
Can you imagine Christ walking through that same room with his fingers in his ears, his head down and his eyes closed to hurting people? In our next podcast, beloved, we will continue looking at why evangelism is learning to listen. Let's pray. Holy Father God, You said in your word that he who winneth souls is wise. Help us to be wise. Help us to take every opportunity to witness to others. By your grace, forgive us of our sins. Cleanse our souls in the blood of Christ. Fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit, the courage, the determination, the boldness to witness uh, to others who don't know you and forgive us of our sin of not doing so. Help us to obey your commandment, your commission, to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, beloved friend, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, somehow you have come to this podcast, you've listened, but you're not a Christian, you're not a believer, uh, it would be a tragedy to listen to a soul-winning podcast and your soul not be one. May I lovingly encourage you to get to know him today. And that is, get to know Jesus Christ. Uh, he will be the greatest friend you'll ever have. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, his name is Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Uh, just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ with all of your heart, that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God for you, so that you can be a part of the church today, and then have a home in heaven with God forever. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today to save your soul, and he will save you. Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Until next time, my beloved, remember, keep the soul winner's fire. God bless you.